gone out of control. What effect might an excess of emotion have on the way we interpret the world? John Sharon has temporal lobe epilepsy. The seizures involve my person and my soul and my spirit, all of it. When I get one of those feelings, I, like, my whole body just tingles and just, oh, I'm like, that's that. John's epileptic seizures are essentially an electrical storm in his temporal lobes. When a group of neurons starts firing at random, out of sync with the rest of his brain. Recently, John experienced one of his worst episodes to date. He'd gone out to the desert with a girlfriend and they'd both got very drunk with disastrous results. John was suddenly hit by a volley of seizures. Each one lasted about five minutes and involved violent convulsions that left him unconscious. Eventually, John managed to get a call through to his father who drove out to the desert to bring him home. On the way home, him and I just got into some philosophical, you know, questions about everything, and I just would not shut up once I got on the way home. I was going and going. It was like I was wired. It's basically an earthquake within the body. And like any earthquake, there are aftershocks. And like any earthquake that does damage, things have to be rebuilt things have to subside. Mainly what I deal with is the aftermath, particularly with this last episode. It was very much like stepping into a Salvador Dali painting. Okay, it, instantly everything was surreal. And that's, in essence, what his seizures are all about, the aftermath. Um, where it puts his brain, where it puts his memory, where it puts his mind, his thinking ability, everything else. When John's seizures came to an end, he was exhausted, but he felt omnipotent. I went running down the street screaming that I was God. And then this guy came out and I was just like pelvic thrust at him and his wife. And I was like, you want an effing bet? I ain't God. And I said, literally, you asshole, get back in here. What do you think you're doing? You know, you're disturbing the neighbors, you're going to call the cops. What is this all about? I kind of just looked at him cool and calm and apologized to him. And I'm like, no, nah, no one's going to call the police. Like, it, I didn't say this last part, but I'm thinking to myself, no one's going to call the police on God. John had never been religious, yet the onset of his seizures triggered overwhelming spiritual feelings. It has been known for a long time that some patients with seizures originating in the temporal lobes have intense religious auras, intense experience of God visiting them. Sometimes it's a personal God, sometimes it's a more diffuse feeling of being one with the cosmos. Everything seems suffused with meaning. The patient will say, Finally, I see what it's all really about, Doctor. I really understand God. I understand my place in the universe, in the cosmic scheme. Why does this happen? And why does it happen so often in patients with temporal lobe seizures? Ramachandran met John shortly after the episode in the desert. He was still feeling the extreme highs and lows that follow his seizures. Ramachandran was about to witness the emotional intensity that John endures. I've been in so much pain that I'd rather be shot to death, dude, or just whipped to death. Mm -hmm. whipped also, also to death. joy? Yeah, I've Sometimes. been in so much joy that I would rather be yeah. left alone. Get, get, take, take everything away and just let me sit there and have that much joy. I feel like I can float and stuff sometimes, you know. Okay. It's just, it's like, mm -hmm. it's like the best. There were times where he would have seven or eight grand mal seizures in a day. Mm -hmm. He would never come back to this reality during that time. I have looked in his eyes in those times, and I have seen, seen a cry for help. 
No, I mean, you guys, that's the thing, though. A lot of other people can just walk around and see the beauty of the world. I can... <sighs> Sorry. Uh -huh. It's not as beautiful. He has a seizure, he'll want to talk philosophy. If you want to discuss all the things that are floating around in this stew he's got up here that he's trying to reconstruct. Thoughts that he may have had just, just floating through his mind while he was in a seizure mode uh -huh. may come surfacing. I see. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It's all But uh, also you said he's become more emotional because because of the seizure. So that's mm -hmm. that's helpful too. Much more sensitive. But oddly enough, not in regards to himself. Okay. okay, but in regards to atrocities, disasters, things like that, anywhere and everywhere, oh. wrongs done to other people. Oh my God! And you know what? I am so right in my own head. I know I could go out there and get people to follow me. <laughs> Not like these wackos with cheats on their heads. Not like those idiots. Right. But now it's just the new generation of the prophets. Yep. And uh, were all the prophets people that were flopping around on the ground? Is that what this whole message was? The gift from the gods this whole time? That's possible, isn't it? Yeah. I've never been religious, ever. People say, no, nope, you can't see into the future. Uh-uh. That's what that gift is, but you gotta pay for it by getting slammed around. Now, why do these patients have intense religious experiences when they have these seizures? And why do they become preoccupied with theological and religious matters even in between seizures? One possibility is that the seizure activity in the temporal lobe somehow creates all kinds of odd, strange emotions in the person's mind, in the person's brain. And this welling up of bizarre emotions may be interpreted by the patient as, as visits from another world uh, or as God is visiting me. Maybe that's the only way he can make sense of this welter of strange emotions uh, going on in his brain. Another possibility is that this is something to do with the way in which the temporal lobes are wired up to deal with the world emotionally. As we walk around and interact with the world, you need some way of determining what's important, what's emotionally salient, and what's relevant to you versus something trivial and unimportant. How does this come about? We think what's critical is the connections between the sensory areas in the, in the temporal lobes and the amygdala, which is the gateway to the emotional centers in the brain. The strength of these connections is what determines how emotionally salient something is. And therefore you could speak of a, a sort of emotional salience landscape with hills and valleys corresponding to what's important and what's not important. And each of us has a slightly different emotional salience landscape. Now consider what happens in temporal lobe epilepsy. When you have repeated seizures, what might be going on is an indiscriminate strengthening of all these pathways. It's a bit like water flowing down rivulets along the cliff surface. When it rains repeatedly, there's an increasing tendency for the water to make furrows along one pathway, and this progressive deepening of the furrows artificially raises the emotional significance of some categories of inputs. So instead of just finding lions and tigers and mothers emotionally salient, he finds everything deeply salient. For example, a grain of sand, a piece of driftwood, seaweed, all of this becomes imbued with deep significance. <laughs> Now this tendency to ascribe cosmic significance to everything around you might be akin to what we call 